Natalie kind of emanated joy. She was almost always smiling. That laughter, that beautiful voice. She was brave, she was opinionated, and yet very kind and respectful. Her tenacity and determination and sort of her no-nonsense attitude. She was a little person, you know, small in stature, but fierce and, you know, larger than life. She was just really good at bringing people together. Okay, I'll try to remember my name. I'm Natalie Nagalingan and... I didn't say my name. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, okay, I failed the first one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I'm Natalie Nagalingam, and I'm an associate curator of botany at the Cal Academy. I like to say that I am like psychads, and we both really like warm environments. She was extremely influential in the field of psychad biology. It's really true to say that her work defined or helped shape how we think about cycads and their evolution, and it will have a really lasting effect. Before I started doing research with Natalie, I didn't even know what a cycad was, and now they're one of my favorite plants, and I want to tell everyone about them because they're so threatened. The reason I got into paleobotany was just through a university class. And I remember being in a lab and holding an ancient fossil in my hand. And this plant was millions and millions of years old and had turned to rock. And I thought it was absolutely fascinating. And it combined my interest in history and in the environment. So Natalie was a first generation Australian. Her family immigrated from the island of Mauritius, which is a tiny island in the middle of the Indian Ocean. And back in Australia, she has this large, extended Mauritian family that's very tight and loyal and supportive and hilarious. And they really are the foundation of uh, who Natalie was. Most of us scientists kind of have this reputation of not really paying attention to how we look or what we wear. And she was unabashedly, boldly colorful and, and vibrant. She could rock red lipstick like no one else I know. She was sort of addicted to buying shoes. <laughs> And she would sort of admit these, you know, uh, shoe binds freeze to me over texts and stuff, and it was pretty funny. She's like, oops, I bought another pair. You know, these ones are really expensive. And I remember she had been doing that since um, we, we were postdocs, and it was pretty funny. Her lasting legacy would be as a mentor. No matter how informal or formal the interaction was, she really took people under her wing and made sure that they were cared for and supported. I first met Natalie during my job interview for that position, and I remember I was really nervous and, and anxious. But I also remember how I felt after the interview, and I remember I just wanted to work with Natalie. She was this really kind and welcoming, and also super smart, and I was really pleased when I was offered the position, and so I accepted it right away. She had a number of interns that I interacted with. They, on several occasions, articulated to me like how excited they were to have this opportunity and how it felt almost kind of like a dream, like they never expected that it would happen and, and they didn't really understand at times like how they had gotten so lucky. Natalie became my mentor during the pandemic. Natalie strongly promotes diversity, equity and inclusion. She encouraged me and, and many others to appreciate the value of our backgrounds and what we bring to that department. And she also advocated for some that were in less privileged positions. Natalie was my role model for what it's like to be a successful woman of color in a field that is so dominated by white men. Natalie told me one of her privileges of, of being a curator was to speak up for those with less agency. And that was something that she really focused on. She never said it directly, but I know for her, it was not easy being a woman of color in the field of science. And I know she got to the position that she had by being brilliant and effortlessly charming, but it was hard work. 
she felt a serious urgency for the academy and the field of science to address the legacies of racism and colonialism. She really wanted us to strive to do better and be better. Natalie loved plants, but she liked unusual plants. In particular, she loved ferns. One thing that I learned pretty quickly is that Natalie doesn't like flowers. Uh, as a botanist, she doesn't like flowers. And I am also a botanist, I love flowers. It was so funny the way she'd talk about them too. She'd just be like, oh, flowers. Or you're like, no, this is stupid, you know? <laughs> she was just not into it. So as a scientist, I love talking to anybody about science and I love talking about plants. Science and plants and botany is all around us. And I wanted to show that plants have stories to tell, even though we don't even know it. People <laughs> ignore plants, and so it's a lot, yeah, there's a lot that we, we can learn from plants. The way that she encouraged asking questions, engaging with the natural world as being something that everyone could and should do. She also was brilliant at this word game that we played every day, um, the New York Times Spelling Bee. It was just infuriating how easy it was for her, and it was part of her daily banter. Her brilliance knows no bounds uh, in the field of botany, in the field of uh, spelling words. She loved blowing people's minds, I think, and, then, and she, she had this little twinkle in her eye. She always said what was on her mind, um, and she always would inject some Australian vocabulary, um, flattering and not into those statements. And so, um, yeah, she just made even a boring department meeting very entertaining by adding in some, uh, some snarkiness, some funny snarkiness. <laughs> I think what we miss most about uh, Natalie is her blunt and sometimes perhaps a little bit abrasive sort of uh, funniness. Natalie was very respectful and very pleasant and very funny on the one hand and Natalie was also very straightforward and very honest and she could really cut to the heart of, of arguments on the other hand and you know those two things don't always work well together in an individual. I mean, I think I'm a fairly straightforward and blunt person also, but um, definitely without Natalie's uh, charm <laughs> and sense of humor. And so that made her very effective as, as a colleague. I don't think Natalie realized how she directly or indirectly impacts many of us. I'm sure that the impression she made um, will remain and will serve as an inspiration to many of us. While I'm very sad that we're not able to continue these current projects with her, um, I think finishing them is a way that we can honor her and it's very important to me and um, I know it's part of her legacy. Um, so that's, that's what motivates me to keep doing this research and also to carry what she's taught me into future research that I do and farther along in my career. Thanks Nat for your beautiful complaints and for the joy that you brought to our lives. We will all carry bits of her with us as we go forward. I'll just be really thinking about her all the time. Although we lost Nat far too soon, her impact was huge in botanical science, evolutionary biology. She was a trailblazer. Natalie was really everything one may hope to find in a friend and a colleague and a scientist and a mentor. Um, I'll miss her forever. <laughs>